So I'm going to demonstrate you. And it's amazing how many times I've done this and even experienced severe. When I ask them, when I drill down, they don't really understand what they're saying. They can repeat it. But the truth is, they don't understand it. Now, the air is made up of molecules, right? Billions and billions. Every time you breathe, I breathe in. Molecules, are, are, we're all made up of gas. Yeah, we all made up of gas. I breathe in, right? There's one molecule. Molecules, this is what they look like, yeah? Floating around in the air. Billions of them. But we can't see them. You know, they might, we can't actually when we zoom in under, under electron microscopes. So they're floating around in the air, yeah? These molecules. So what happens is the temperature in here at the minute is probably around about 24 degrees. Now at 24 degrees, we have said when you warm air up, it expands, the molecules expand, yeah? So now what's happening is it's holding water. This molecule will, will absorb moisture, yeah? Will it hold water together? So how full, of, how full of water is that one molecule? What would you say is a percentage? Is it 10% full, 20%, 30, 40, 50, 60? How full is that molecule with air, with water? 60. 60%? Right, I'll take that. Do you agree with that? It's just over half full of, air, of water. So that's not a problem. 60% relative humidity is perfectly fine. Yeah? So what happens is if I, if I turn the temperature up now, so that's the relative humidity, the relative humidity now, right? When we talk about relative humidity, is 60%. What it means is the molecule is holding 60% of the amount of water that it could potentially hold because it's still got a big void up here. So it's 60% full of water. That makes sense? Yeah. So we've got 60% relative humidity. What did I say happens to molecules if you warm them up? Yeah. Expands. So I turn the temperature up five degrees. So how full is that now as a percentage? 30. 30%. So I've turned the temperature up. It's exactly the same amount of water. It hasn't changed, but the molecule has gone. It expanded, hasn't it? So now we're talking 30% relative humidity. The air is holding 30% of the water. It could potentially hold because we've still got a void. That makes sense? So I turn the temperature up to 30 degrees centigrade. What's the relative humidity now? 20%. 20%. Does that make sense? So as I turn the temperature up, what happens to the relative humidity? Drops. Perfect. You wouldn't believe how many people don't understand that. 95% of people get this wrong. I say, so if I turn the temperature, what happens when the relative If you make it go up, no, it doesn't. It's the opposite. It goes down because I'm warming it up. So we'll put this into a scenario. We're coming from work. Yeah, the house has been unoccupied, and the relative humidity is probably sitting at around about 50%. We create the problem because we breathe. I breathe out water together. We cook, we have a bath, a shower, we, you, know, we cook, well, you cook your meal. So it's all water, isn't it? We produce lots of water. So as we start producing water, the air, will, the molecules will absorb it, so the relative humidity starts going up. So we come in from work, we're sitting there at the minute now, so what's here, 60 odd percent? You reckon? So if we're sitting at 60%, we turn the heat on because we're coming from work, it's freezing outside. Turn the heat up. Within an hour, what's happened to the relative humidity? It's dropped. It's dropped, yeah. So we're watching telly, doing whatever we do, you know, we're in the house, not a problem. The, 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 the relative humidity will fluctuate all the time because of the temperature. We go to bed, what time, I don't know, what time do you go to bed? Half nine, ten. Oh, ten o'clock? Yeah. When we go to bed, we generally turn the heat off. Do you turn your heat off? Or does it go off? Yeah, it just goes off. Right. So when you went to bed, the relative humidity was sitting at around about, say, 30%. Yeah? So you, you go to bed, the heating goes off, so the house is going to cool down. What will happen to this when it cools down? The, the air starts to shrink, doesn't it? Mm. So as the, air, as the molecules start to shrink, you went to bed at 10 o'clock. By 12 o'clock, what's the relative humidity? 40%. Or 50. 50%? Mm. Yeah. So at 12 o'clock, the relative humidity is 50% because the air is cooling down. 
at 2 o'clock in the morning. What's the relative humidity? We're sitting there now. 70, 80. Probably a bit more. 90%? Mm -hmm. Happy with that? So now it's 90% 90, 90 full of, it, of water. Same amount of water, but it's just the monarchy was reacting differently. So around about 3 o'clock in the morning, the temperature drops again because we have a frost. How full is it now? Right, 5%. It's actually full, 100%. 100% so relative humidity at 3 o'clock in the morning is now 100%. What happens if the temperature drops again? This, the molecule wants to contract, but it's full of water now, so what's it going to do? What it does, the temperature drops below, obviously whatever, whatever temperature it is, the temperature drops again, it's a frosty night, but the temperature goes down to minus five. This molecule is going to contract. When it contracts, what's going to start happening? It'll start leaking out. Yeah. That's called dew point temperature. The temperature at which water starts to be expressed from the air. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And that's why when you wake up one morning, you see the water in your windows. Yeah? Because the temperature has dropped, the molecule is trying to shrink. And as it shrinks, it has to express some water to make it get to, to shrink. And that's what's happening overnight. So then your heating comes on at 7 in the morning. Yes, in the morning. Yeah? So, so now we've hit dew point temperature, the temperature at which water will be expressed from the air. So this is floating around, hits a cold surface, a window reveal, hits a door reveal, you know, hits a cold spot on the ceiling, and as it passes, the molecules pass over the ceiling, that cold spot there where we've had a leak, it's like that, as it passes over, because it's cooling down very quickly, so it's trying to shrink even further, so it's starting to let a, let a lot of water out. It's pure water, it's been steamed, we've condensed it, it's called distilled water, pure water. Mold loves pure water. It doesn't like tap water because it's got chlorine in it, it's got fluoride in it. But this is pure water distilled and more moves it. So as the temperature carries on dropping, that's what happens. So your heating comes back on and within an hour, the temperature's gone up. What's the relative humidity now after the heating came on? 60%. So can you see what the, where, where it occurs? Temperature goes up. Well, if humidity goes down, when we go to bed, everything cools down. We've been in all night, we've been breathing, we've been cooking, we've cleaned, we've had a bath, we've generated loads of water here. Fill the air with, with water, but now it's going to cool down, and when it starts cooling down overnight, billions of these might. And then as it cools down, hits the temperature where now the molecule is full of water. If it cools down any further, this is going to shrink even further. It has to express. And then we end up with that. But if you're left your heating off completely, but you're gonna freeze to death if it's minus five or say you have to have your heat on. The idea is what this is, an even if only moderate temperature. If I have my heating set at 18 degrees, I recommend as a minimum. If I left my heating on constantly at 18 degrees, that won't fluctuate. Cost is money, mate, but that's why condensation is a massive issue.